Hello, welcome back. Today I want to introduce you to the concept of a Lyapunov function. Now, Lyapunov, Lyapunov function is a central object in the study of nonlinear systems, and the main thing that Lyapunov functions let you do is they allow you to deduce stability um, of nonlinear state space models um, without actually having to go away and solve for lots of trajectories and see what happens. So when, we, for example, we were drawing phase portraits or using Poincaré maps, it was all based around just plotting trajectories of systems. And this is something that we had to do numerically, because in general, there was no closed form expressions for what those trajectories would be. And this makes things very difficult um, from a stability perspective, because if you're basing things on trajectories and you can't find expressions for these trajectories, it gets very difficult to work out whether or not things are stable. But the Akhenov functions offer an alternative. And uh, we want to introduce them now. So before we get on to a Lyapunov function, we are just going to draw out the phase portrait for a particular two-dimensional uh, nonlinear system. So we have some system, x dot is equal to f of x. x is two-dimensional, so we have an x1 and an x2. And we just draw the phase portrait in the normal way. And we're just going to use this picture to help build our intuition for what a Lyapunov function is. So let's say this is an equilibrium point here, this is x star, and we have a bunch of trajectories for our system. So initialized here, maybe the system does something like this and it spirals into our equilibrium point, and the same thing happens over here. Um, and we also have a bunch of arrows. And these tell us the value, or the direction at least, of x dot at these various different points in our state space. So we have our phase portrait, and now we're going to introduce a Lyapunov function. And we're going to introduce this through level curves. So I'm just going to start drawing curves of a particular function. Um, and the way you should start to think about this is in terms of like uh, curves of constant energy. So there's a good way to think about the Lyapunov functions is as energy functions, and we'll get into that a bit more when we do some examples. But I'm going to draw some curves on, and you should start to think about these being like curves of constant energy for our system. So in particular, I'm just going to draw a curve that looks like that. And I'm going to draw a curve that looks like that. And the idea is that on our, um, our, our state space, we have this additional function called a Lyapunov function, and you can start to imagine contours of constant value for that Lyapunov function. So I'm just going to say we're going to call our Lyapunov function b, and this contour here, this is the values of v of x is equal to 2. So given any x in our state space that lies on this curve, the value of v of x is equal to 2, let's just say. And similarly, we're going to say this is the contour of v of x is equal to 1. And actually, our function is defined, let's just say, everywhere for now. You don't have to define it everywhere. But we have this function, and it's got a bunch of level curves, and they look something like this. Um, so why can these things start to be useful? But you can now sort of start to think about the evolution of our system as moving from one energy level to another. So in particular, if we look along this little stretch here, we see that our phase portrait is always pointing in um, along this set of points. And so what we can sort of intuitively start to understand is that these arrows happen to be pointing to, dire to a direction of lower energy. Um, and then we could imagine doing the same thing here and checking uh, whether x dot um, or, or our little arrows in our phase portrait, were they pointing to a direction of lower energy again? And then what you can start to imagine is if that at every point x dot is pointing to a direction of lower energy and our equilibrium point corresponds to a point of zero energy, well, that means that our system will always be moving to a region of lower energy, and eventually that will force us to arrive at the equilibrium point x star. And Lyapunov functions are just a way of formalizing this idea. So we're now going to start to write down some properties of Lyapunov functions um, that will capture this idea of moving from 
high energy to low energy, and therefore towards um, equilibrium points, or limit cycles, or whatever we want. But we're going to talk about the uh, equilibrium points for now. So let's suppose, um, so we have our Lyapunov function v of x, and what properties does it need to satisfy? Well, it needs, we need to have v of x star is equal to zero. So this is just saying that when we evaluate our Lyapunov function at the point x star, which corresponds to our equilibrium point, it has zero energy. So zero energy is going to be our lowest energy value. And then everywhere else, v of x is bigger than zero, except at x is equal to x star. And there's no need to define these things everywhere. Um, in fact, the useful thing is to only have a Lyapunov function defined on some region of the state space. And then we can use the Lyapunov argument to argue whether we're going to be stable on that region. Um, but we won't worry about defining regions just yet. We'll just assume that we have this Lyapunov function. And for whatever x we have, we can uh, evaluate it. And this is just saying that everywhere except the equilibrium point, v of x is bigger. So we have some function that has a bunch of contours. And these contours all correspond to values larger than 0. So now, how can we go, so what do we want? Well, we want um, trajectories to go from high V or high values of energy to lower. And how can we start to formalize this? Um, well, we need to introduce the gradient of our Lyapunov function. So let's just do that at this point here, say. Let's think about what the gradient is. And so I don't know if you remember, but whenever you have higher dimensional functions, the gradient is always uh, pointing uphill. And it's always tangential to these, uh, it's, always at, um, it's always perpendicular to these lines of constant v. So if this is the contour of v of x is equal to 2, then the gradient um, of v evaluated at that point will be pointing at right angles um, to this contour of constant v. And so now how can we formalize this idea of um, trajectories pointing to directions of lower energy, but we just need to use the dot product. And in particular, if we look at grad v of x and we dot product it with x dot, so this is the direction in which x is changing. This is what, and then in our face portrait, we can see what these things look like. This is what grad v of x looks like x dot looks like arrows going like this. And so what's the condition to be moving from an area of higher energy to an area of lower energy, or an area of higher values of the Lyapunov function to an area of lower values of the Lyapunov function? Well, it's just that this thing is negative. So if you remember, if I have two vectors, a and b, the dot product will be positive as long as a and b are just at most 90 degrees apart. But by the time it gets more than 90, it, this becomes negative. So requiring this to become negative just means that it's pointing strictly inside. And we could similarly, if it was just less than or equal to, we could be moving along a contour of constant v. If it's strict, then we're moving strictly inside. And, and this is how the Lyapunov functions work. Um, so you. We have no idea how we would go about finding a Lyapunov function. Um, and there's definitely a bit of uh, black magic in the process of finding Lyapunov functions. But this is the idea of how they're used to deduce stability or not. So you have this function which has zero energy at our equilibrium point. It gets larger and larger and larger. And as long as 
the gradient of our Lapinor function when dot product when we take the dot product with x dot is less than zero, then we're always heading into a point of lower energy, and eventually then we'll um, arrive at the origin, and we can start to say the uh, the, the equilibrium point is stable or um, asymptotically stable, globally asymptotically stable, and things like that. Um, so that's the idea behind the Lyapunov function, and um, we'll now move on to um, more formally um, how to relate properties of the Lyapunov functions to the different types of and uh, different notions of stability that we saw before. Thank you.